Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Genshin Championship. I'm Zenzen Kitty. And I'm Chaos. Hi, guys. Today in the Championship, we're going to cover patch 3.4 with the release of Al Haytim and Yayao. Yep, so it's a Dendro reaction favored abyss. Now, our two competing contestants are Syntax and Illustrious. On one side, Syntax is a free to play participant, and on the other side, Illustrious is a low spender, or rather, a welcome player. Okay, now let's explain the rules for today's match. The goal is quite simple clear out floor 12 of the Spiral Abyss as fast as humanly possible. Now, only a maximum of two 5 star weapons can be used, and no offensive cards are allowed. Alright, now let's take a look at our Abyss Blessing for this patch. The Dendro Res and the Electro Res will be decreased by 30% for opponents that are under the Quickened state. Hmm, very interesting. Yeah, it's a great buff for the new character I'll hate them if any of these spirits are planning to use them, as well as any Electro user that plan to use Quicken reactions. Yeah, and with all that being said, let's get into the draft. Okay, so to start everything off, we have Syntax on Team Aether and Illustrious on Team Lumine. Both contestants are AR60, and Syntax will have the first ban as well as the first pick. And we have a very confident first ban of Xing Shu, very very meta pick. Oh, followed up maybe by the Yelan? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's a lot of a single target DPS uh, damage loss, as well as a Hyper Boom team comp, perhaps. And Raiden being banned third. Three very big meta picks being banned off the table already. And it's gonna be a Kazuha ban. Yep. This leaves up uh, Nahida as a potential first pick if uh, Syntax does decide to opt into it. I think that would be very good against this floor with the current Abyss Blessing. But we're gonna get a Bennett instead. And now uh, Illustrious is gonna have double pick and I assume- oh, okay, we have a Nahida. That's very very good. Yep, so it opens up the possibility of Dendro comps. And let's see for the second pick. Yeah, and I think Illustrious is going to have some aggravate choices left, such as the Kaching, the Yaimi, and Zaino, who are all very, very good against the assignment. And I think Kaching is a little better against the Rune Guards, as she can quick swap better than Sino can. Yep, okay, so on Syntax's side, Zhongli and official pick third that's a pretty interesting choice it's good against the assignment in chamber three but i think it's gonna lack a bit of damage there yeah i'm a little curious to see what the syntax opt for his dps choice here i'm not really too sure but we're about to see oh <laughs> and exactly as you predicted kaios the yamiko and the kaching both of them being picked by illustrious okay yeah, I actually think that the Kaching choice is actually very smart because in the very very first floor, uh, in the first chamber, uh, quicks, there's a lot of quick swapping, so Sino doesn't really do as well, right? When there's waves of enemy coming in. Yep, agreed. And now we see an Ayaka being banned away on the, uh, on the side of Team Lumine. And Team Aether is going to respond with a Xiangling ban. So I personally know that Illustrious plays Melt Ganyu, so this Xiangling ban was very aggressive. Yeah, and just a quick mention is that we do have a Ningguan main DPS here, so I don't necessarily know how Fischl fits into this aside from taking out the assignment. Hmm, yeah. Okay, so Diona and a Kokomi. Let's see what Syntax is planning here with the Kokomi. Okay, with the Kuki, I think it must be a Hyper Bloom with Dendro Traveler, right? I think Nilo here and Dendro Traveler for sure can be a very good angle for Syntax if he wants to go for a Hyper Bloom comp. Maybe make it work together? Mmm, yep. And there we go, the signature C1 Ganyu from Illustrious. But of course, he will suffer a lot without the Xiangling. So let's see if he opts into another Pyro choice, perhaps? No, so locking in the Mona? Okay, yeah, so it seems, I, I think it's yeah. definitely a Frieza uh, Ganyu comp. 
But he yeah. does have that shield so from Diona that can help him deal with the Magu Genkis in the second floor. Yeah, so it seems like he's heading towards the Morgana comp choice. And yep, as we predicted, it's the Aether Dendro. Yeah, it looks like a um, Hyper Bloom team comp from Syntax here. Mm, I feel like it's lacking a bit of damage again in the second half. Yeah, that's gotta be the free to play lap. You don't actually like they don't <laughs> own like all the characters, so they have to make do with what they actually own, right? Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yep, with the venti last pick, of course, the Morgana comp. All right, so we're gonna start soon. Um, honestly, I think uh, Team Lumine's draft looks pretty solid, except the Morgana. I think that comp will heavily suffer in the second half of Chamber 2, especially against the Mago Kenkis. I much prefer this draft here, as he can utilize the Abyss Blessing, and as well deal with the assignment, and Syntax draft looks like it lacks a bit of damage. Yeah, for sure. Alright, here we go. So I see a 5-star weapon on Ningguo. C6 Ningguan, C6 Fischl, but only C4 Bennett. What a shame. It's not a C5, but oh well. Yeah, it's a two glad two Shimano on Ningguan, as I noticed. And for some odd reason, we have a Gilda Dreams on Fischl, EM Fischl. I don't really know what it does with Crystallize here, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Fischl has 269 total EM. Kind of wasted in a Geo comp, uh, but it's okay. We'll see. Yeah, it's also a mention to it's a Arcac Petra Jolene, so it's yes, not really, uh, I guess, the uh, extra damage here. I know. Okay, so you know the Arcac Petra four piece is very unconventional, and I really love to see unconventional stuff. But in this case, you know what? Uh, I would definitely prefer four piece Metalith um, because Ningguo will be the main DPS, and unfortunately, it's not possible to have Geo crystallized shards. So Ningguang is not even going to benefit from the Petra buff. Yeah, and despite all of that, this Ningguang's hitting like a truck, regardless of all we said. But um, <laughs> yeah. I think it would have helped her damage overall. I would have much preferred uh, seeing, like, as a Illustrious won the first half of the draft, we can all agree. Uh, I would have much preferred seeing him doubling down on uh, a Goro pick, C6, instead of official, if he has one. Because it would have given more damage to Ningguang and jacked her damage even more up. And you can, like clear the first and second floor faster perhaps and you know like just be like yeah you know what I cannot win the assignment floor but it's okay right yeah that's right but nonetheless still finishing off uh, this first half in only 81 seconds pretty impressive with the Ningguang pick all right on the side of team Lumine now we see a Kagura on the Yang Miko double crowned and you know what I noticed none of Sorry. these characters are at level 90. <laughs> They're either 80, 84, or 85. Yeah, I think that's the case of like, as long as you ascend them, you, you get the, you know, like the ascension uh, bonuses in any way, so you don't really necessarily need to level them up to 90. It, it doesn't really um, do too much. It's just if you're min maxing and you have, you know, major OCD, that would help with your visuals, but that's about it. Okay, now I, I feel personally attacked. Um, but uh, seriously though, I, I did uh, see the R5 Hakushin Ring on Sucrose and I just wanted to comment that I really, really like that choice. So as we already know, Sucrose, an excellent enabler, um, especially in this Electro comp. But on top of that, okay, Hakushin Ring gives all nearby party members the 20% um, elemental damage bonus for the um, elements that is reacted and we do know that Sucrose can swirl Electro very easily and on top of that she can't swirl Nahida's Dendro so it means that the Nahida pick won't affect the Hakushin procs. Brilliant. Yeah I definitely agree I think that Sucrose does bring out the best with these uh, swirls, Electro swirls that can come up really quickly but to mention uh, oh the F1 trick so he's gonna collect the particles while time is frozen which is a good way to not waste any time getting the particles as well. And I wanted to mention earlier that uh, Yai Miko is actually running Gilda Dream, so it's the EM Yai Miko. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, and 82 seconds, so very, very close. Only one second's difference. Yeah, they're still neck to neck, so um, that's very, very good, considering that um, the assignment floor is where we're going to see a huge time leap. Okay, let's see the Kokomi with the TTDS. 
Yeah, so, oh, he's trying to bring the Whooper Flower to the corner. Apparently, Whooper Flower decided to bug or have oh. a dance party and not go to the corner. <laughs> because usually, uh, ideally, like, everybody loves to bring them in the corner and makes it quicker for the damage and grouping in them up. But that's gonna be very unfortunate, and I think that's gonna cost him some time here. A little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also did notice that uh, the Umbrella Sword on Kuki will give her a total of 921 EM. Pretty impressive. And she's wearing the Four Piece Paradise, so obviously it'll be for the Hyper Bloom. Um, Chaos, I personally really like uh, four star weapons that have animations. Like, for example, the Umbrella Sword on Kuki. The little eyeball in the middle can move. It's kind of creepy, but at the same time, it's really cool. And honestly, I think that Hoyoverse should give five star weapons some small animations as well. It's essentially a five star weapon in terms of animation, we can say. <laughs> yeah. least, uh, but I'm, I'm surprised that uh, Syntax didn't offer putting this comp in the first half and the other one in the second half, right? Because the yeah. shield, the only shield and all that, like, would benefit a lot more against the Magnum Genki, right? Then the yes. small Beidou show, and also like a uh, electro dendro reactions together would have been better against the assignment. So, yeah, I think that would have been much better. But uh, nonetheless, that was unfortunate. He got hit there on like a uh, Beidou. Yeah. Oh, I also wanted to say that um, I think the rotations are they will matter here. Otherwise, you will be proccing a lot of electro charge and aggravate, which is not what you want. You want the hyper bloom in this comp. So uh, yeah, one thing to pay attention to. Yeah, but since the the Beto show isn't like very sustainable, like you have to like quick swap a lot, right? Even against yeah. these uh, smaller mobs, not even the Genkis yet. Oh, he's gonna take a lot of damage here. Um, and yeah, like considering all that, I'm so really really surprised that he decided to opt in with a TTDS choice on Kokomi, right? Like, sure TTDS can work out, but like you gotta play it nearly perfect, right, to make it like really really worth. Otherwise, I think the safer route would be to take a her other four star option weapons or five if you have the donut for some odd reason. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's go. Now it's Team Lumin with the C1 Ganyu. I have so much to say about this comp, okay? So, first of all, obviously, she has her signature uh, Amos weapon. Um, she's at level 82, the Ganyu. <laughs> so, again, not level 90, but 82. Not even 85, okay? But, anyways. So what I wanted to say is that um, Ganyu here is running Double Cryo Resonance plus 4-piece Blizzard. Now, I personally would have loved to see a 4-piece Troop since she's running the Amos anyways, but um, essentially, I wanted to see an Aqua Simulacra Ganyu. Like, real talk, an Aqua. The reason is because later on, especially against the Maga Kinkies, the TTDS on Mona will be hard to maintain on the Ganyu, because surely she will get uh, hit left and right, and she will need to quick swap to other characters. Meaning she won't get the full stacks from Amos, and she won't be able to get the full duration of the TTDS buff either. That's why I think that having the Aqua Simulacra for the extra crit damage would be more beneficial in this case. Yeah, I, I gotta say, like, his rotations as far as well is very, very crisp. Um, the TTS is gonna make it for tight rotations, but I mean, if that was the case, I would have preferred much seeing a HP Sans on Diona getting a better shield, right? Because uh, yeah. you don't need overkill on ER here too much, as uh, Venti is already giving a 15 energy restore back to the element infused with his ultimate, right? To each of the party member with that yep. same element. So, yeah. And finishing with 77 seconds. And moving on to the floor 12, chamber 2 now. This is where uh, I think Zhongli does in fact help in the first half uh, against the Consecrated uh, Beasts. Yeah, the Consecrated Red Vulture and the Scorpion are super annoying to deal with. And on top of that, they can proc overload, doing quite a bit of damage. Plus, you know, their combos are just super strong and they can one tap you. Yeah, personally, I got out hate him, and I played him on this floor. I did not run a shield user. And that, <laughs> those things, they killed me a lot of times, let me tell you. If you <laughs> even slip up a bit and don't respect the little underground pound from this guy, he straight up takes you to the grave. Hey, hey, I'ma just say this. That's a skill issue. <laughs> okay, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. You're not wrong, but listen, <laughs> listen. Um, when there's so many animation going on the screen, you guys, I don't know about you, unless you're a pro gamer, uh, you, you know, it's a little difficult to dodge them. So oh, yeah. that's why 
people like me, we, we like them shields. Very, very good. <laughs> yeah. Why need skills if you can have shields? Yeah, and uh, Syntax has both, so he has skill and shield, he's gonna show us how it's done. Because yeah. with shield, you can totally ignore dodging, and you can just simply focus on them. Yeah. I was gonna say, I actually really like Syntax's rotations and his patience holding onto the Benny ultimate, making sure that he has his ult on everyone else first. Oh. Yeah, only 89 seconds. Yeah. I mean, his Ninkwon is very, very strong, actually. So I, like I said earlier in the first uh, floor, I'm surprised you know, if this was with a girl on top of it, it would have like nuked the consecrated beast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's see. Oh, abusing the F1 strategy again. Yeah, he's gonna be able to regain the particles while time is frozen, and uh, Kaching's gonna shling shling every single uh, Karagi's here. Yeah, doing the shling shling tactic. Oh, and the little fancy jump. Okay. Okay, so you know what, as a Kaching main myself, right, I do appreciate uh, Illustrious dropping the E into the ultimate, into the second cast of E, making sure that he gains the 15% crit rate from the, uh, the ultimate. So yeah, I do appreciate You sound that. like uh, you're from the Kaching main server, huh? Uh, doing all uh, the math. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yes, I am. Of course I am. You know On a what? Serious Oh, yes? Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, you already know that, but I got Kaching in the first ever Venti banner. So technically, I lost my first ever 50 50 to Kaqueen. So she was your very first 5 star character, right? That's correct, yeah. I got her, like, I think within a week of playing Genshin, of, like, Genshin's release date. Yeah, and, um,. Yeah, Illustrious is going to be able to clear that only in 66 seconds, very, very quick. Mm -hmm. And here is where trouble is going to arise for a Syntax, perhaps. Yeah. Since Beidou Shield isn't the most reliable, that also means he has to dodge really well or swap characters more often, making it hard to get the full value of Kokumi's TTDS. Yeah. Okay, whenever I fight them, I literally think, prepare for trouble, make it triple. Like, this is literally it. Yeah, this is essentially fighting Team Rocket, except the Team Rocket is actually on crack and they're not uh, they're not bad <laughs> this time around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little tip actually. If you stick on the main one, okay, of the main Magu Pinky, the uh, Galloping Frost and the Lone Gale has a very big chance to just stick around too. So you can just AoE them afterwards. Yeah, we saw that he was able to uh, dish out a huge amount of damage with his combo there, so he does deal quite a lot of damage regardless still. That's very, very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the Hyper Bloom is definitely doing work here, but oh no, the Kokomi getting frozen. So Kokomi's Jellyfish, the initial cast, will actually apply the wet status on uh, Kokomi herself. Uh, so she's just got to be careful of that a little bit. Yeah, but her, it's not like Barbara where like all the teammates going to get wet and, you know, like uh, frozen. So it's only going to be the initial 0.1 second when Kokomi casts like you said. Yep, absolutely. Okay, and so wow, with the honestly, yeah. honestly, uh, Syntax is doing a pretty good job surviving the onslaught of the Team Rocket here and just making it out in 87 seconds. Mm-hmm, pretty solid. But All right, this is it, the Ganyu Morgana against the three Magu Kinkis. So the Galloping Frost um, has 30% Cryo Res. Uh, it's definitely going to be an issue, okay, for the um, for the Ganyu. Yeah, and I don't die on a shield here. It's not going to be like too too strong to tank them uh, for too long. And ammo's blows. He's going to have to quick twelve blows. So I don't know how he's going to be able to really stack up the ammo here. Like you said, yeah. I think if he does own the Aqua, it would have been better. But you know, he's uh, Welkin, so may maybe he just doesn't have it. Yeah. Also, the Diona only has 17k HP, Kaios. Um, that's very low for a Diona. Seriously, I don't think the shield's gonna. It's not gonna last at all, actually. Even with five icy paws hitting, it's still not gonna last. Yeah, as long as he's able to land the dot damage from the Venti ultimate and low numbers, I think that's where most of the damage is gonna come from as well. Oh, he yeah. took a big hit here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speaking of the Mona, actually, I think I would have wanted to see a some DPS Mona instead of a TTDS. I think it would help tremendously. Yeah, I mean, either that or I think. Just having HP sense on the Diona would have tremendously made a difference for the Amos uh, stacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then again, you know what? 
Diana having nearly 200 ER will guarantee that she will have her burst up all the time. So at least we know that they're gonna survive the onslaught. Yeah, I mean, they could burst you pretty quick too, so I mean, and you know, it, Ganyu has a very low HP, right, in general, as a character. I think though, I would much prefer, like, you know, having a bigger, stronger shield rather than, you know, rely on the healing, right? Mm -hmm. Which will cost you a lot of time if you do end up getting hit, as we can see here. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing though, like you have to know which abilities you can afford to hit to take versus which hits you're, you can't afford to take. Right, because some hits are one-shotty. Some are not that bad. Uh, some can chain CC you into death. Ooh, 100 HP on Ganyu! Ganyu oh almost went to the grave there. Luckily mm -hmm. enough, he was able to switch out just in time. But as we discussed earlier in the draft, uh, this would have been the floor that Illustrious struggles the most, right? And we yeah. can apparently see that. Yeah, we can definitely see it. Uh, the timer is already at uh, 626 right now, so that wouldn't even be a three-star clear. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, you know, like contestants, like they do not, like we said earlier, they don't own all the characters. So maybe this was his, you know, best in slot character of choice that he could have went with. Like maybe everyone else would think, like, yeah, but there's like so many other DPS choices left up. But guys, uh, remember, they only have a limited amount of characters that they might own, right? So he has to make the best of what he has. Mhm. Mm yeah. Agreed. Agreed. But with that being said, I mean, hey, only massive terrors left remaining, so. I think definitely here that uh, Illustrious lost a lot of time, so that might give uh, Syntax a lot of time to, you know, like catch up and win this perhaps. It still has a yeah. really good chance. Yeah. And uh, a good thing for Illustrious because he has all his bursts up ready for the next chamber. Yeah. And with that, it's only gonna take him 201 seconds, a lot more time than uh, Syntax. <laughs> only 201. Okay, and now we opt into the last and final remaining floor. But I think here is where Syntax will have a lot of hard time and where Illustrious can catch back up now. Because he does have the quicken reaction against the assignment. That's what we talked about in draft, right? Yes. You know what? A small detail, but I really love the fact that Ningguang keeps on passing through the Jade screen to give her that extra 12% uh, Geo damage bonus. It's a small detail, but it does make a big difference. And yeah, here and we go, the official smart, shines! Very smart utilization of the Ningguan Jade screen. And honestly, I've never seen a Ningguan run before on this floor, but she does quite a lot of damage, I would say. Like, she's really strong. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also did notice that uh, Syntax plays it um, very smartly. Only ults on Ningguan if he has the Jade screen, because it gives him more Jade stars. So, again, perfect uh, utilization of Ningguan's kit overall. Unfortunately there though, both Jade screens were consumed, technically you can say. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, and also having the C6 alongside does help him have more Jade stars as well. Mm -hmm. And also, Geo can take down the components quite effortlessly. Then he swaps to Fischl, and then the assignment is revealed. Yeah, and I, I think he's doing a really good job of utilizing uh, Fischl Oz to reveal uh, the assignment, and I want to say, like, guys, don't you think that Ningguan should have been a five star? Like, look at this mm -hmm. amount of damage. Yes. They did my girl dirty for real. I used to play yeah, her sure. all the time, and she's honestly very, very fun to play. With 815 remaining, I thought his comp would have lacked more damage, but Syntax was able to clear this floor a lot faster than I had anticipated. Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, so now let's see on the side of uh, Illustrious. This should be a walk in the park for him. The third time abusing the F1. Um, but yeah, seriously though, with the, uh... It's not abuse, it's a tactical strategy okay, of, of okay. a display of skill here. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. I agree, I agree. So yeah, um, with Catalyze reactions, it should be quite easy. Oh no, utilizing the F1, but the Nahida didn't quite get her burst fully charged. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm still expecting the Illustrious to be able to clear this first half a lot quicker than Syntax, but uh, we will see if a uh, skill issue plays into part or not. <laughs> because the Hida definitely makes this floor a little piece of cake mm -hmm. with a uh, Quicken. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, Illustrious is uh, really, really quick and able to locate a... Um, because you saw the debuff on the um, assignment, so you can see where he's at, even if he's invisible. Okay, but the background music is lit. It's lit? <laughs> yeah, it's Nahida's like theme, I love it. It's lit up like a assignment right now, he's about to go down. <laughs> yeah, he's about to go down. And he did, in only... 75 seconds! Alright. Illustrious able to clear the assignment a whole 30 seconds faster in Syntax. That was to be expected with a Nihita Aggravate comp along with the Abyss Blessing on his side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so far uh, the two times are relatively close and we will see uh, what happens in the last chamber in the second half. This will determine everything. Yeah, I think Syntax took a lot of hit on the Dendro Traveler, so that's gonna cost him a little bit of time there. Yeah, and you know what, Chaos? I wanted to talk about a, uh, a little bit about stamina management. So it's honestly a really underrated aspect of the game, but when you see uh, a player playing in the Abyss, you can really distinguish whether they're okay, whether they're good or great um, by the way that they manage stamina. Like I said earlier, you have to calculate which hits you're, you can afford to take and which ones you will need to dodge. Um, because if you dodge every single incoming attack, you will run out of stam, right? So this is something that I'm very interested in seeing, especially on this floor, the stamina management. And as I'm saying that, we can see the Beto getting knocked because she's at zero stam, unfortunately. Yeah, it's the second time here she gets knocked against the... Aramite ladies uh, yeah. with their free pets. Um, it's looking a little rough. Mm -hmm. So a little tip is actually to just take out the summons because they're quite squishy. And then it'll force the three Aramite ladies into a stunned state. And then they'll have minus 50% resistance against their own respective elements. So it's kind of ironic, but that's how it works. Yeah. And I think uh, with that being said, I mean, uh, there is not much left here. He just has to quickly take out as the summoning pet is down. Oh, but it's unfortunate they didn't group up. So another little strat is that if you target the Aramites on the side, the one in the middle will uh, it might teleport near you. So then you can at least get two of them. Uh, you can AOE both and then take care of the last one. Yeah, you you get briefly a chance for it, right? Which is mm -hmm. good if you're lucky enough to get it. Again though, the Hyper Bloom reaction so strong and uh, challenge completed in 134 seconds for a total of 619. Okay, so let's see on the side of uh, Illustrious. He's got the perfect score, 619. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it. Okay, so yeah, I, really think, think... I think Morgana here is going to have a lot of easier time uh, grouping them up because yeah. he has Venti. Exactly, this is really where the Morgana comp will shine. Venti's burst will suck in all the Aramites, and Ganyu will have no problem taking them out. All of the bubbles are so annoying, and they're RNG too. Yeah, I think uh, as long as uh, he watches out for the bubble, he, he do not have any, any issue. He just needs to dodge them and won't lose any time for it. Yeah, so Venti's burst here cannot absorb the three Aramites because they are not in their stunned state. But as soon as the pets are taken down, then Venti's burst will be able to absorb them. Because the enemies are frozen and cannot retaliate, that also means having a weaker shield and running that ER Sands on Diona won't be an issue for Illustrious. Yeah. And look at that grouping and the freeze! Ganyu will have no issue taking them out. The last one remaining! And the final shot right about now is going to clear him the floor. Woo! And challenge completed in uh, 78 seconds for a total of 579. And congrats to Illustrious from Team Lumine for winning the Genshin Championship.
Yeah, what a great performance from Illustrious to deal with a clear Yves in 579 seconds and take the victory over Syntax. And now that makes Team Lumine 4 0 in the Championship Series. Yeah, I hope that Team Aether will be able to find his victory very soon. A big thank you to Illustrious and Syntax for participating in this competition and for showcasing spectacular performances as well as unique team comps. A special thanks to our producer Rin as well. Now, if you're interested in participating in future championships and if you want to appear in our videos, then please join our Discord server through the link in the description box below. The Discord server's name is Happy Gaming Cats, and upon joining, you'll be met with instructions on how to proceed and how to get into the competition. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and we'll catch you for the next one. Thank you for watching. See you next time, guys. Bye.